Hello and welcome back to our HIP New World Order campaign. In our last episode, we finished our two holy wars that we declared over here. We've taken two duchies in two different kingdoms, so we are prepared to grant Lithuania independence as soon as we're at peace. And the same goes for the uh, well, formerly Duchess of Mazovia. I guess they've had a succession in there. That is fine, though. We are still in a couple of wars. We are revoking... Well, we're going to... First of all, win this war and imprison our Count of Utrecht and then revoke a title from him, and the Aragonese Revolt is still going on, but I have to imagine not for much longer, since it seems to be pretty much done at this point. Oh no! At the age of 82, my body may be sapless and infirm, but my mind is as healthy as ever. We are going to gain the trait infirm. So that's bad. We're probably going to die soon. Since that's not something that we can really expect to recover from. Our Duchess sends words of, word of enemies. We'll take all of them prisoner. We are up to 96% against Utrecht, so hopefully we live long enough to at least see the conclusion of this war. One more siege anywhere will do it. You are taking a break from discussing war plans with your fellow commanders and decide to start chatting with one of your guards. He tells you my cousin is out fighting infidels and what do I get? Guard duty. We'll tell him not to worry. So that's 100% in the revolt. Aragon has won there. Oh, and our new Duke of Livland, who we uh, only just ennobled last time. I guess he was noble already, we just granted him land. Has already died anyway, and passed on his titles, that's fine. And our siege is about to fall here, which will get us 100%. Okay, so I think we'll... let's see. We look at our direct vassals map mode. He has Utrecht, which is du jour up here, and he also has a lot of land in the Duchy of Holland, also some in Flanders, and another county down here. I guess we'll just revoke Dauphine from him, since we can grant this to another character down here, and it will be relatively neat. And actually, I suppose that means that France is going to want it. Not because it's du jour part of France, but because he has Burgundy as well, and it's du jour part of Burgundy. Hmm. I'm just thinking, maybe... No, that, that seems a little much. We could potentially try to revoke the Kingdom of France from him, and also Burgundy, and try to grant them to members of our dynasty, and grant them independence, because we don't need so much land, even if we give away the whole of du jour France and Burgundy. We're still going to be basically in charge of all of Europe. And it would be nice to maybe get a couple more du jour kingdoms under dynasty members. And also, uh, France right now is of course busy conquering some land outside of his du jour kingdom, and I'd rather he didn't do that. Alright, well we're going to have to revoke all kinds of titles anyway to do that, so there's no reason not to just go ahead and continue with what we're doing for now. So we'll revoke 
Define from him, which no one will object to. Uh, we have to nominate successors for Kingdom of Burgundy. Uh, I guess because it's in elective, and now we have a title that is an elector title. Okay. That's fine. Um, so these guys became our direct vassals, but this guy did not because he has two counties. One of which is up here. Alright, we'll just grant the duchy to one of these people. So this didn't quite fix things. Um, Utrecht still has one county down here. But I guess it's a little better. And France is now going to want control of the Duchy of Dauphine. I guess we'll just give it to him. I guess that gives him cause to go to war with Utrecht. Though he would have had that anyway by virtue of being the King of Burgundy. Anyway. We are at peace now, so we can go ahead and grant independence to people. I'm going to start with the Duke of Mazovia here, though actually he is at war, so... Oh no, wait, there was, um... There wasn't a succession, it's just that there's a revolt going on in here. Okay. So we're going to have to wait for her to be at peace anyway to grant her independence. That's okay, we can grant independence to our grandson, the Grand Duke here. Where is it? Oh. He's also at war, of course. It's only a county conquest, though, so that's going to be very quick, hopefully. I'm sure he has incentive to finish it quicker if he knows that he's going to be granted independence once he wins it. Let's see. Infirm gives us a minus 2.5% health penalty. We have plus two from strong, and we have uh, no health bonus actually from fortune builder, but we also have family focus, which gives us another one. So we're still net positive in terms of health modifiers, uh, ignoring our age, of course. Uh, remove a revolt, okay. Somewhere over here, I assume. Well, that's fine, we'll raise Lithuania's levy. Should be more than adequate to deal with this. More counties converted. Oh, it looks like Lithuania himself is actually dealing with it just fine. We'll stand by just in case. Polish revolt. Okay, Timur is doing things. Has Lithuania lost interest in the revolt after that first battle? I guess we'll go and see what we can do then. The assassins are destroyed. The Hashishin are no more, as their fortress and mountain hideouts burned. The last members of the once feared assassin order are hunted like animals and cut down without mercy or compassion. When found, their legacy now survives only in the legends and stories spawned from their exploits. Okay, good riddance, I guess. You've improved our queen's opinion, which is nice, I suppose. And we wiped out the revolt, so let's go ahead and end that one. And speaking of Poland, there was something else we were going to do. Our dynasty has been kicked out of here. So... Let's see. 
And we do have a claimant that will accept an invitation. Invite her to course. It is a strong claim as well, so we can press that regardless of who else is in charge of Poland. So I think we'll go ahead and do that. Look at our dynasty map mode. Yes, we can see that we've lost control of this kingdom. Alright, she accepts our invitation. So let's see. Claim Poland on behalf of our niece here. Unfortunately, uh, she's actually non matrilineally married, so pressing her claim is only going to be a temporary solution. Her children are not going to be of our dynasty. Which is very unfortunate. Hmm. In that case, maybe we won't bother. We'll see if. Um, there are any other claimants? There weren't any that would accept an invitation yet. Like Otto here, he's not married, so he wouldn't have the same problems. Let's see, why don't you want to accept an invitation? No reason to move. What about pressing your claims? Let's send him a gift. Still no, okay. Well, I'm going to set him as special interest and see if he maybe changes his mind in the future. Okay, new Countess, that's fine. So we actually have no truce with Gallic Volhin right now, so we can immediately go to war with, the, with them again if we want to. I'm sure this bishop is not a heretic. He doesn't look like a heretic. But I'd kind of like to stay at peace for a little while, just to see if Lithuania can get out of their war pretty quickly and we can grant them independence. Cold arms from England against the Bulgarian Empire. Well, I think I'm going to maintain my policy of not getting involved in intrafamilial squabbles, and we'll decline this. Even if the Kaiser over here is still a heretic, which I assume he is. Actually, this is a new Kaiser. Carloman IV. Who is... Incredibly learned, but also an imbecile. Oh, we have a new Queen of Lithuania, okay. That's fine. Their war still continues. And we've died. Well, not too unexpectedly, but I am very sorry to see Kaiser and Lutgard go. She's been an amazing character. We died bedridden and infirm at the age of 83 leaving behind our third husband. But yes, long live Kaiser Dietwin. We are 26 years old. Our current heir is our brother Kaspar, who I guess we'll do for the moment, but we'll definitely get started on trying to have some strong babies to inherit after us. Let's go ahead and actually get married now, since we can do that. And if we can find a genius to get married to, that would be amazing. 23-year-old genius, who is also lustful. Don't mind if I do. I don't know why I'm really even bothering to look at anyone else. That's uh, pretty much all I could ask for. We'll lose a little prestige, but not a big deal. Let's see, we need to appoint a new treasurer. We'll give it to... Uh, let's see, this courtier, I guess, would actually be better since he'd fulfill his ambition, but I think we'll give it to the actual landed vassal instead. Not least because it will improve her opinion enough that we can then ask her to convert and stop being a heretic. 
We stand to lose the title and succession right now because we haven't nominated a successor. That's fine, we'll see who we have available of our dynasty. Our brother Kaspar, I guess, might be a good choice. He is strong, at least. Our cousin Romilda here is going to be too old, even though she's a genius. Our tall sister, I guess, could be a reasonable choice. Uh, I think we'll vote for Kaspar here right now, he's at least fairly young, so if we happen to die unexpectedly, we should be okay. Alright, ruler and married, already dealt with. We have a child who lacks a guardian. Give her to this courtier. We need to choose an ambition. Uh, which I suppose will be to get married, since that is just about to happen. And for focus, let's see, we're not a very diplomatic character, so we might have a little bit of succession trouble here. Let's, um, let's hold off on choosing uh, focus for a little while and see if we will maybe need to pick up a bit of extra diplomacy or something. There are rumours that certain tax collectors in my realm are disgustingly corrupt. Unfortunately, I don't have any good evidence to back this up, even after a lengthy investigation. Still, the commoners are convinced otherwise. If I don't do something, they might grow restless. But on the other hand, imprisoning the officials without cause would be problematic as well. So... Definitely would rather not become arbitrary or paranoid. And we're already diligent, so... All we'd be getting out of this event is a little diplomacy, which would be valuable. And a reduction in revolt risk. On the other hand, we could try to become patient, which we are not already might be a little better for us to have than Wrath. But we will, of course, anger the peasants. Yeah, I think this is fine. It's a little annoying to have revolts all the time, but... Mostly our vassals will deal with them, and actually our sister is apparently being voted for as the heir. Okay. That's fine, I suppose. Treasurer is converting. We fulfilled our ambition to get married. We probably don't need the money, especially not one gold. What is this? We'll take 300 prestige instead. One gold, indeed. Okay. And we can hold a grand tournament, which we probably will. Let's uh, choose our ambition first. It's going to be to have a son. Okay, let's see, our wife is extremely diplomatic, so that will help us out with succession. Improve our state diplomacy considerably. Let's keep an eye on our faction screen for a little while. Yeah, already people are leaving, that's good. Call to arms again by the King of England. We will decline. And we have a peasant revolt, as kind of expected. It's in France's land, so I would hope he'd deal with it. But unfortunately, his army is entirely over in England right now. Cold arms from Queen of Antioch against the Antiochian revolt. I suppose we'll accept. Looks like she has this well in hand. Uh, it looks like there's a decently sized army from one of our vassals here assembling, though the uh, rebels are on their toes and have caught up before it regained morale. Alright, Kaspar is now taken over as our heir. Also fine. Of course, we would prefer not to inherit as him. And we've converted a county. Let's move our chancellor, or not chancellor, but chaplain somewhere else. Okay, so we might have to raise some levies to actually deal with this. I think half of France will do just fine. 
Obviously we want to regain a bit of morale before we actually attack them. But we are just about out of time for this episode, so we'll leave it here for now. Thanks for watching, and join me again next time. <laughs>